Christ in me sees the Christ in you everyone's a chosen one the many and the few all together now it takes two the Christ in me and the Christ in you to know Namaste. And welcome to the Life Enrichment Center live streaming from beautiful Flint Township on this wonderful, it's got to be autumn day. So I invite us all to just join together in just a centering prayer that brings us to this moment. So if you would, just close your eyes and focus on your breathing. And just allow your breathing to slow, become deeper. There's no place else you need to be. Nothing else you need to think about. So let your thoughts slow down. So that in this quiet or quieting moment, we become aware of the presence, the now, the holy place where the within and the without join together in unlimited possibilities for creation, for expression. And so it is into this sacred now moment 
that we speak our prayer, knowing anything and everything is possible here and now. And so we speak our prayer for the health and well-being of every being on our planet. For the health and well-being of the animals and the environment. For the health and well-being of all that is made manifest here and now. Through all things. Through all things. And so we speak our word for specific healing for all those who have been calling for healing of their physical body. We know that that presence is in every cell, every muscle, every tissue. And it is bringing that health and strength and well-being wherever it is being called for. And we speak our word now for peace. By recognizing first that peace within ourselves. By feeling that peace as it calms our emotions. And in that calmness, we speak it now for every being, knowing that peace is. Peace is the substance of all that is. And we speak now for peace in every mind, peace that guides every word and every action of every living being. We claim it now as the only presence. And we are so grateful to know that in this moment, whatever we are calling for, individually and through this prayer, is being answered. As we open to that answer and allow it to be, we stand in answer prayer. And we do now. And so it is. Amen. All right. Well, we have um, an opening affirmative statement for September um, that reflects our focus on the power of peace. And so if you'll repeat after me, I am responsible for what I see. I am responsible for what I see. For how I think and react individually. I let there be peace on earth because I let it begin with me. Okay, that's a good one. All right, well, we have a few announcements. As it continues to be mentioned, our September focus is on the power of peace and CDs of today's talk, Behind the Scenes, and that's S-E-E-N-S, will be available upon request for $3 and up on our podcast along with a complete video of today's live streaming um, sometime tomorrow. Okay. Um, if you saw my post on Facebook last week, then you already know what I'm about to announce. That post, in that post, I was looking for um, a practicing Buddhist to offer a Buddhist prayer at our World Peace Service next Sunday. And I am so excited that we are going to um, really incorporate uh, our World Peace Service, something that in one way or another we have been doing here at LEC for over 20 years. And we're going to incorporate it in 
um, our Sunday service next Sunday. And so many beautiful faith representatives. All of them are friends, friends I've either met through Facebook, old friends, uh, friends that I've come to know through previous uh, World Peace services. But we have some beautiful prayers that have been mm, videotaped and will be um, presented um, next Sunday. So um, please join us. It's going to be a beautiful service, and uh, I'm really happy to uh, be doing this. OK. Now, if you, what's coming next? You're just like a mind reader. If you're an active member of LEC, then by now you've received an e-announcement um, letting you know that we are looking to fill two positions on the steering committee and detailing for you um, what those requirements are. And um, as we said in that e-announcement, it's a beautiful opportunity to become a part of, uh, of a shaping LEC's future in beautiful, positive, abundant ways. Um, it's a beautiful opportunity to get together with other loving uh, members who care so much about LEC and about each other. It's such a loving environment. We have such a good time together. And so, um, if you'd like to um, put, have your name put on uh, a very short slate at this point of candidates for the steering committee, please, this week, um, respond to that e-announcement. And if you've already trashed that e-announcement, then go ahead and send your um, email to, um, what is the email address? lec2512 at gmail.com, and you could let us know that way. And then we're going to be having, uh, and you'll be getting an announcement of this, but we are having our annual meeting where we will vote um, on the uh, positions available, on the people that want to fill them. And uh, we have some other things on the agenda. Uh, and we're going to meet this year via Zoom at 2 o'clock on October 11th. So mark that date on your calendar so that you can be there and be square. Okay. Um, let's see what else. Let's see. All right. Just want to remind you again um, that if you'd like to join us, on Wednesdays for What's Up Wednesdays, you are welcome, always welcome. And what I'm finding, too, is that um, the, the people that show up are a beautiful focus group for me, and I can ask how they're feeling about certain things we're doing here at LEC. So it's a beautiful opportunity to share your thoughts, to say what's up with you individually, say what's up in your mind. Um, so join us. And if you want to, then you probably know by now uh, that Jim Gould is our Zoom man. So you let him know at j period r period gould123 at gmail.com. And he'll send you the information that you need to join us. And as I like to mention, we have a centering meditation. Um, it's a guided meditation that's based on whatever our focus is for the month. So come and um, join us for a peaceful meditation that begins at 12.05. Okay. If you're new to our LEC service, welcome. We love you already. And um, if you hear some things that cause you to stand up and cheer, do it, because you're going to hear, hear them here. You're going to hear some good things, some wonderful things, some life-changing things, if they're practiced. And um, so 
stick around and um, for now know as we know that the universe loves all of us and supports us in all that we choose to be and do and have. All right, so um, before my talk, we're gonna have a beautiful song by Faith Rivera and Harold Payne, and it's called Stand Together. on this month is the peace that begins with us when we choose to be a peaceful being in the world. If we want there to be peace on earth, then we must decide to make peace a priority within us. Martin Luther King said, peace is not merely a distant goal that we seek but a means by which we arrive at that goal. 
Inner peace is the means by which we arrive at the goal of peace on earth. Now, inner peace is available, it's present for us to choose all of the time. It becomes an outer experience only as we choose to make it a priority most of the time. Through the thoughts that we intentionally focus on most of the time, through the emotions that we decide to give voice to most of the time, and through our purposeful movements and considerate actions that we take most of the time. The more we practice peace, the more peaceful we become. And the more peaceful we become, the more peace we allow to come into the world through us. St. Francis de Sales, who was a 17th century bishop, and he was known for his, the peaceful way that he dealt with the religious divisions of his time. And he wrote, do everything quietly and in a calm spirit. Do not lose your inner peace for anything whatsoever, even if your whole world seems upset. Our whole world certainly seems upset right now, doesn't it? I mean, we all want to feel peaceful, but with everything that's going on, I mean, in politics, as a result of climate change, and with the fears and mandates of COVID, it's easy for us to lose our inner peace over just about anything. In fact, many of us are on our last coping nerve, and we're not even aware that we are. Now, there are certain people in our life that we know well, and there are well-known people in life that we know of that can trigger negative emotions in us that don't surprise us because... Well, we expect to feel those specific emotions, which is actually, actually why we continue to feel them. But these days, if we're not aware of how we're feeling within us, if we're not consciously monitor, monitoring how we're doing mentally and emotionally, then even the smallest thing can set us off. For example, the other day I was standing outside of Kroger's looking at their flowers, and a small car started honking its horn. Well, it wasn't really honking its horn. It was laying on its horn so that it was just one long, drawn-out sound, loud sound. And this went on for several minutes, and it got my attention because I wondered if someone had passed out over their steering wheel. But it turned out that another car had either gotten the parking spot that the honking car wanted or cut them off in the process of parking. But either way, the honking car had pulled up behind it and blocked it in and was serenading it with its horn. And since the honking car was also blocking the entire lane behind it, all the cars behind the honking car, honking car started honking too. It was really noisy. And then the honking car, because the other car was at the end of the aisle, decided to move and come up next to it. And as the car moved, I noticed that a tiny elderly lady was the driver. She was, her head was barely above the steering wheel. And she pulled up next to the offending car 
And she began to honk, this time in staccato. And she was looking in the car, and she looked like she was looking for a fight, a physical one. And I, I thought to myself, I sure hope some big guy doesn't get out of that other car. And so the honking car stayed there for a while and honked and honked and then got no satisfaction because nothing seemed to happen. And so it drove off. And when it did, the driver of the offending car, also a tiny elderly woman, got out of the car and went into the market. Now you'd expect to see both of these ladies at a church bake sale. I mean, I was pretty sure I'd have been able to pull them apart had they gone physical together. But the point is that it's vital for us to become aware of how we're doing mentally and how we're coping emotionally so that a small thing doesn't become a big deal. Now, in California, when I was growing up, there was a fertilizer plant that had a huge pile of manure on its property. The pile was so big, it was known as Bandini Mountain, after the name of the fertilizer. And since the pile was easily visible from the freeway, it became famous. There was even a song written about going skiing on Bandini Mountain. And since it doesn't snow in Southern California, you know what that song was about. So why am I telling you this? Because if we're not aware of how we're doing and feeling, if we don't take time to soothe ourselves, with peaceful thoughts that allow us to feel calm within ourselves, then even the smallest molehill can become a Bandini mountain, and we will find under our feet nothing we want to ski on, and certainly nothing we want to fall into. Even in the midst of all that seems to be happening these days, whether it's happening in our individual life to ourself or someone we love, whether it's happening in our country or in the world, we each have the capacity to stand at the center of our own peace. Lao Tzu said, make your heart like a lake with a calm, still surface and great Depths of kindness. If we make inner peace our priority, if our intention is to do what we do with a calm spirit, as often as we can, then if we find ourselves suddenly upset, by the regulars, or by something else. Because we've been practicing being aware of how we're doing mentally and emotionally, that sudden upset doesn't need to get any bigger or last any longer and turn our whole day into a pile of manure. We can take time right then and there to quiet the turbulence. We can begin with forgiving ourselves for losing it in the first place and to soothe ourselves with kind and loving thoughts so that we can return as soon as we can to being a peaceful being in the world. Before peace can manifest in this world, it must become present and active in our inner awareness and expressed through us as us. There's power in maintaining a peaceful inner life. 
There's power in consciously choosing which thoughts and emotions we want to dwell on. It's strong to stay calm, even when the whole world seems upset. In the book of Psalms, we read, let there be peace by your power and prosperity within your walls. Maintenance of inner peace requires diligence of mind and emotions. Otherwise, we may find ourselves burning with rage over the tiniest thing, like a wildfire that started by the smallest spark. We must decide to let peace begin with us through our power and not someone else's. Otherwise, we give the world power over us. And if we do, then we'll find that we are stoking the flames of conflict and chaos in a world that we claim we want to live peacefully within. So why do we choose to procrastinate when peace is so urgently needed in the world? Well, usually it's because we're not ready to let it begin with us. We're not even convinced that it can begin with us, that that's not where it begins. We want to see evidence of peace around us before we decide to be peaceful within us. We want someone to give in, give up, take responsibility, and say sorry. We measure the presence of peace not by how much peace we feel within us, but by how much we see around us. But peace, like everything else that appears in form and expression around us, does not begin outside of us. Everything we see begins with the vibration of the beliefs within us, and what we believe is is often based on what we see before us. We don't look beyond the obvious to the unseen energies within us that are causing us to see what we see and the way we see it and to react to it. It's there. Which brings us to the title of today's talk, Behind the Scenes, S-E-E-N-S. Better late than never. In the book of Hebrews, we read, Now faith, now faith, is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. What we see with our eyes isn't what causes things to appear the way they do for us. Things that appear to us begin with the unseen but not unfelt energy within us. We know what we're doing if we pay attention. I mean, if it weren't true that our energy, peaceful or angry, made a difference, then peace could never come to earth and begin with us. But there's so much in this world that we don't see that we have substantial faith in, like gravity. I mean, we can see the results of gravity. We can often even feel gravity. But we can't see gravity with our physical eyes. Still. We have so much faith in gravity that we never worry that we're going to fly off the planet. And 
We wouldn't intentionally step off a high building or jump out of an airplane without a parachute if we wanted to continue to live. And we have faith in the unseen law of mathematics. I mean, we see the results of accurate and inaccurate calculations, and we know that, try as we might, no matter what we do, we will never be able to make 2 plus 2 add up to anything but 4. But we can physically see the law that keeps mathematics true to what it is. And we can't see the spiritual, vibrational law of love that keeps us true to what we are. We are mostly non-physical, spiritual, vibrational beings, even while we're having this physical human experience. The biggest part of us, the most powerful part of us, can be felt and experienced within us, but it cannot be seen with a physical eye. We don't see energy, we feel it. We don't see thoughts, yet they emit a vibration that we feel emotionally, we feel within us, and often people around us feel the vibration and energy of our thoughts. And that vibration is always responded to by the spiritual, vibrational universe in which we live. The Bible tells us somewhere, just came to mind, don't have it written down, but that nothing that is hidden will remain he hidden. There is nothing within that won't be exposed, but it begins within. It'll be revealed. And through the unseen law of attraction, we attract to us and around us what we think about most of the time. Our life is revealed without exactly as it vibrates within. It's the law of attraction that organizes the universe and keeps it true to what it is. Everything that becomes visible in the world has already been organized behind the scenes by the law of attraction in response to our individual and collective thoughts, the thoughts we met. Tomorrow is already here. It's been organized behind the scenes. Every thought is a prayer that's answered in the moment that thought goes out. Answered prayer has nothing to do with lip service. It's not what we say. It has everything to do with what we believe life to be and who we believe we, we are in this life and where we think we're praying to. We must be able to clear our mind and open our heart as we pray. To clear our mind and open our hearts as we think. To soothe ourselves with thoughts that cause us to feel calm 
because there are so many in this world right now shouting peace, peace, peace when there is no peace behind the shouting. In the book of Matthew, we read, but when you pray, go into your room and shut the door. Go within yourself. Close your eyes. Don't look at the world. And pray to your Father who is in secret, in the spirit, unseen by the physical. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Thoughts are prayers that go out into the spiritual vibrational universe that sees the vibration and feels the energy and responds to it in the secret, unseen substance that is emitted. A prayer to make something fearful go away is filled with the substance of fear. It's based on what is already here and behind the scenes that fearful substance is already creating more in the world for us to be afraid of. Tomorrow is already becoming. But a prayer of peace and love and joy that is based on faith in the divine presence behind the scenes creates more peaceful, loving, joyful things around us for us to interact with. It brings in the peace. It brings in the love. It brings in the joy. Peace Pilgrim said, are you a slave to your self-centered nature? Or does your divine nature guide your life? Do you know that every moment of your life you're creating through thought? You create your own inner condition. You're helping create the conditions around you. It doesn't matter if we say or sing, let there be peace on earth. It doesn't matter if we talk about peace and it doesn't matter if we march for peace unless what we're doing behind the scenes for peace is being a peaceful being. We can do that quietly. We can do that alone. We can do that anywhere, anytime, no matter what. It doesn't matter how loud we shout it. It matters how deeply we feel it. The peaceful thoughts we hold in mind now. Faith that our unseen thoughts affect the world. We see that our unseen thoughts can be made manifest in this world. Is evidence of the presence of peace on earth. Tomorrow is already here. Peace is already becoming. We are the evidence of the things not seen yet. We carry with us the powerful substance of peace that is hoped for around us. And in this way, and only in this way, as we become the peace we want to see, can we let peace begin with us?
Namaste. All righty. Well, that feels good. Whew, got that out. Ha, soothing and calming. All right. Well, this is the time of our service when we get to say thank you, thank you. Thank you for supporting what we're doing. Thank you for being a part of what we're doing. Thank you for joining in the, this particular movement of grace and peace and love on the planet. We're in this together and we feel your love and we appreciate your support. Because eventually, eventually, we'll all come back together in person again. And in the meantime, this is keeping us together in ways that up until this all started, we might not have imagined. So if you'd like to support what we're doing and invest in the future of the Life Enrichment Center, we invite you to support us financially, either by going to our Facebook page, Life Enrichment Center, and hitting the Donate button, or going to our website, LEC Flint, Dot com and hitting the contribute button. You can do it through PayPal. You can send us a check and you can text us. It's right there. So thank you for all you are doing. We feel so grateful that we're going to go right into our song, which is called Grateful. And it's by Nemo Patel and Daniel Namath. You're my life, you're my breath, you're a smile, you're my guest, you're the earth, you're the sun, you're the grass, you are love, you're my hands, you're a bug, you're my eyes, you're a hug, you're the light in the dark, you're the spark, you are fun, you're my mom, you are water, you're the stars, you're my daughter, you're my friend till the end, you're my dreams, you're my father, you're the ants on the ground, the miracles that surround, I'm feeling it all around, the hemisphere in the clouds, you're my pain, you're my sorrow, you're my hope for tomorrow, you're the strength when I'm hollow, you're the path that I follow, you're the blessings that exist, the small things that are bliss, the gift to realize that Everything all that I am, all that I see, all that I've been, and all that I'll ever be is a blessing. It's so amazing, and I'm grateful for it all, for it all. Everything all will feel gorgeous. Sit and pray cause what I have is more than I deserve or could ever imagine How do I give back to all of this magic and spread the love so everybody can have it Doesn't matter if I'm rich or poor, if I got a family or if I'm all alone Bad things happen, I can just complain and moan But there's a million things that I can be grateful for Yes. 
The small things that are bliss, the gift to realize that everything is a gift. This life, just as it is right now, is filled with blessings. It is the blessings as we try to count them. It is the blessings yet to come. It is all of these things. We are so blessed with an infinite source of love that loves every one of us. Loves us, no matter what. We are so blessed that we can choose to love. And that as we choose to love, we bring love into this world. We are so grateful that we can be Whatever it is we desire to see around us, we are grateful to know that we do not need to depend on anything outside of us, that all that we need forever and ever, for lifetime after lifetime, is within us. Right here, right now. Becoming more and more as we allow it to be through us. And we do now. Gratitude opens the door. Gratitude frees all that is good and beautiful and holy and peaceful and loving and joy-filled to come through us. And we are feeling that gratitude now, knowing that everything is a blessing and we are grateful for it all right here and right now and feeling so filled with gratitude, so filled with all that can be and all that is now we say our statement of abundance together divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have all that I give and all that I receive amen all right well we have a closing affirmation and then we'll go into our peace song and it goes like this my life is the evidence of peace on earth. Ready? My life is the evidence of peace on earth. Again, my life is the evidence of peace on earth. One more time. My life is the evidence of peace on earth. Woo! That was a good one. All right. Well, we're going to close out with the peace song. And um, we love you. Feel your love, and um, yeah, we're going to peace out.